our Milky Way galaxy contains tens of billions of potentially habitable planets, but we have no idea whether we're alone. For now, Earth is the only world known to harbour life, and among all the living things on our planet, we assume Homo sapien is the only species ever to have developed advanced technology. Reptilian menaces called Silurians evolved on Earth before humankind. At least in the Doctor Who rendition of the universe. But science fiction aside, how would we know if some advanced civilization existed on our home planet millions of years before brainy humans showed up? This is a serious question, and serious scientists are speculating about what traces these potential predecessors might have left behind. And they're calling this possibility the Silurian Hypothesis. The Silurian Hypothesis is a thought experiment that assesses modern science's ability to detect evidence of a prior advanced civilization, perhaps several million years ago. And we are going to tackle this for the next video. But for now, I want to give you evidence or information that might cultivate your mind. According to Ionian, Greek philosopher and the eponymous founder of Pythagorism, Pythagoras, he is quoted to say, Number is the within of all things. Indeed, it is possible to explain many natural phenomena in mathematical terms. Nevertheless, even the most advanced mathematical models are only approximations of the real world. Actually, if you watch all my Vortex math videos, you will realise that all things are numbers, and the 3, 6 and 9 are the foundation of all numbers at the quantum level. Astrobiologist Makukov and mathematician Vladimir Sherbak published a study they've conducted on the human genome. Their research has led them to the shocking conclusion that there is a hidden code within our DNA, one that contains precise mathematical patterns and unknown symbolic language. It is generally accepted that DNA contains the information or codes that are necessary to build a life. But why are there mathematical patterns within DNA? And why is DNA fine-tuned by the golden ratio? They looked into the human genome and they found what appeared to be a divine stamp on our genetic code. And it operated very much like a mathematical type of code, just like in programming. I always said it will never be a crash spaceship or ray gun that we'll dig up somewhere in the sandy desert, but it will be found within our own DNA. Finally, someone has come across the one piece of evidence that I've always thought in order to prove that we might be living in a computer simulation. And even Rich Terrell proposes this. He is from the NASA Jet Propulsion Laboratory, California Institute of Technology, and has helped design missions to Mars, discovered four new moons around Saturn, Neptune and Uranus, and taken pictures of a distant solar system. Terrell has his opinion about our creator, who most refer to as God, Terrell wondered how much computing power would a simulation of the Earth require? Well, humans are doubling their computing power every 13 months, and Terrell says that computers already match the human brain in computational speed. Right now, our fastest computers on the planet are capable of 1 million billion operations per second. At this rate, in 10 years, Terrell believes that computers will be able to create a photoreal simulation of all that we see around us. In other words, the Earth. Let's go back to the mathematical patterns in our DNA. The ancient astronaut theory suggests that at some point the unknown creator targeted our DNA with an artificial mutation of our genes. And if this is true, some have argued that we are in a sense 
organic, highly advanced robots, because through that manipulation of our genes, we were given intelligence, and not just intelligence, but also consciousness. So, it was done artificially, which means AI, artificial intelligence. This evidence provides the reason why humans have such a strong affinity to not only create cybernetically enhanced versions of themselves, but to merge with them. And also remember that humans have the power not only to understand or dig the deepest secrets of the world, but also to shape and improve it. So, this could be the evidence that, just as these advanced civilizations may have programmed us, humans at a genetic level, now we're actually programming the artificial intelligence of robotic beings and merging humans with AI in the same manner just to carry on this agenda that was started so long, long ago. Another clue is if you think about the Great Pyramid. It was built by quarrying an estimated 2.3 million large stones, weighing 6 million tonnes in total, which were dragged into position. Many varying scientific and alternative hypotheses attempt to explain the exact construction techniques, but we may never know exactly how the pyramid was built. Even so, we can say with some confidence how many people were required to build it. We must start with a time constraint of roughly around 20 years. My theory was, what if the Earth before was flat? Just like this one before they came up with the conclusion that they wanted to make it round. Then they built a pyramid to get the exact circumference of the round Earth. Because if you want to make a sphere to be perfect, we would need a pyramid to measure the number of endpoints. Each point would need to be precise from the particle level all the way to the molecular level, whether the sphere is stationary or in motion, which makes determining perfection a tricky feat. And the Great Pyramid of Giza was the only surviving wonder of the ancient world. It has inspired endless speculation as to how it was built and what purpose it served. For centuries, researchers have been amazed at the mathematical knowledge that is encoded into the Great Pyramid. The measurements that are used in it, and even the placement of the Great Pyramid, has aroused much interest among Egyptologists. If you have to take the length of the Great Pyramid in the corners of the actual building, it translates into 365.24 pyramid cubits, which just happens to be the Earth a year, right down to the quarter day. Additionally, they don't use the inch as we normally have it in the English system, it's the cubits. And what's interesting about this cubit is that it is exactly one twenty-five millionth of the polar diameter of the Earth, meaning the distance from the North Pole, the South Pole of the Earth, chop it up into 25 million pieces, and it's perfect. It's a cubit. The measurements of the length and width of the perimeter of the Great Pyramid correspond to an exact fraction of both the latitude and longitude measurements at the equator, just scaled up. This means the Great Pyramid directly corresponds to the circumference of the equator, as well as the measurement from the equator to the pole, making it a scale model of the northern hemisphere. When you look at the Great Pyramid's alignment, it's aligned very, very closely to true north. It was aligned to within 360th of a degree up north, a more accurate alignment than any other structure on Earth. The Great Pyramid is not only perfectly aligned to the cardinal points, but its placement on the Earth is also seemingly intentional as well. If you pass a great circle from the Great Pyramid through its cardinal and its ordinal directions, what you will find is that these circles will pass through more landmass of the Earth than any other location on there. You find that the Great Pyramid is essentially located at the centre of the world's landmass. 
If you take the location of the Great Pyramid as a coordinate, this number sequence of coordinates matches exactly the speed of light travelling through space measured in metres per second. Well, this is surprising stuff when you consider the vast amount of information about the Earth that's encoded directly into the Great Pyramid. You can't just dismiss all of this as pure coincidence or means of an accident. So, are we living in a computer simulation created by an advanced unknown creator? If you think deeply, every architect, engineer or creator needs measurements or a ruler that can be defined as a tool or device used to measure length and, for example, draw straight lines with it. So for me, in my own point of view, the Great Pyramid was built to serve as a tool, a guide or an instrument to create a perfect ellipsoidal form or roughly a sphere shape, which is the Earth. Because without this tool, it would be difficult for the creator to measure what would be the perfect or right size of the Earth. The perfect speed of light, the perfect time, distance, direction, weight, volume, temperature, pressure, force and so on. I am not saying that my theory is faultless. We all have different opinions and speculation about why the Great Pyramid was built. Actually, even now they do not know why, they can only guess. This speculation is my own theory and I will respect all of your beliefs and judgement. I just want to give thanks to the Creator for giving us the intelligence, knowledge, information and wisdom that we may use to discover or dig deeper to find the secrets and mysteries of the world. Because I always believe that the Great Creator gave us true freedom Freedom to experience, to discover, to continue, to develop, to enjoy, or even start a new beginning. If you have enjoyed this video and you're inspired by what you've seen, don't forget to like, subscribe and share. Let's change the world together.